there everyone and welcome to coffee shop thursday yeah i'm sitting out here on my my porch once again it's sunny out but the wind's blowing pretty swiftly right now and it's in the mid 30s so um, it's a little nippy so i'm gonna grab my cup of coffee grab yours too mm. warms you up on the inside yeah i mentioned mid 30s right now the wind chill at this time tomorrow is going to be in the minus 30s. Minus 30s. Yeah. Hey. Which gets me around to what today is all about. Today, you know what it is. February 2nd, Groundhog Day. And isn't this the day that we're supposed to get that prediction that, man, spring is on the way? And not so much from Punxsutawney Phil. No, just didn't happen. He saw his shadow. Six more weeks of winter. What's that all about? You know what? I'm going along with my old pal, Dunkirk um, Dave. Yep, Dunkirk Dave, you know what he said? He saw no shadow, which means early spring. Now, you might say, okay, what's going on here? There's no such thing as two different groundhogs. Oh, yeah, there is, because... Dunkirk Day. He's been doing his thing for about 50 years. And uh, do you know his percentage rate of being accurate is 47%? You know what Punk's Tony Phil's is? A measly 39%. Yeah. So come on. Let's go along with the groundhog from Western New York. Well, you know what, though? That gets me into um, scripture. Yeah, it does. And we can sit around and talk about this and, and argue it out. But gets me into isn't Groundhog Day sort of like uh, hopes and prayers that we, we we honestly hope something will happen, but it doesn't happen? And then we start saying, why, God, why you put me through all this misery? Meaning the elongated winter. <laughs> you know, so if Dunkirk Dave is wrong, we're all going to be complaining, right? And oh, we're going to be complaining anyhow. And complaining is something that goes on a lot in the Bible. Oh yeah, it does. In fact, as I was looking over the reading that our Episcopalian friends are going to be using for this coming Sunday, it comes from the prophet Habakkuk, and I'm going to get to that in just a minute because there's something key about complaining, and I don't know what's the proper way of putting it, but how to do it rightly. Yeah, how to complain rightly to God. Now, Habakkuk found himself in the position that he inherited a very um, rigid type of theology that uh, gripped most of the people at that time. Because we're talking about the times of the writers, and they often, they're often known as the Deuteronomic Deuteronomic, say that 10 times real fast, Deuteronomic writers. So that would be the book of Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, uh, 1st and 2nd Samuel, and 1st and 2nd Kings. Basically, their theology said this, and it's not bad, it's just the way it was. You do good, good things are going to happen to you. You do bad, you're going to be punished for it. And that's the same thing that we tell our kids, right? So, uh, but there's only one problem with that. See, now you have other Old Testament writers who come along, and you'll recognize it right off the bat. The book of Job is one of them. But we find it all through the Psalms and other writings, especially in Habakkuk, in which, you know what, God, you know, we're doing good stuff, but bad stuff keeps happening to us. And so the complaints are raised up to God. Why are you doing this to us? Why aren't you helping us? Why aren't you stopping these bad things from happening to us? And there was a book written not too long ago, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People, right? And it's just a fact of life. So you have these complaints. They're often called laments. Now, some laments in them, the people recognize their sinfulness, so to speak, and so they recognize why they're in the wretched position they're at. But sometimes the laments are coming out, as we have today, that we're doing everything right. Why is all the bad stuff still happening to us, God? And it's a real tough thing to deal with. And we do that, you know. We, we do a lot of bargaining with God. God, I'll straighten up my act and... If, if you just if I do that well things get better for me 
but sometimes it just comes out, God, I haven't done anything bad or wrong, and I am trying to be faithful to you. Why are all these bad things happening to me? Well, that's the type of theology that Habakkuk was brought up with and had to deal with as he's trying to prophesy to the people of his day and age. And it's, it's, it's tough rowing for them. But remember I, I mentioned just at the beginning here, maybe there's a proper way to complain to God? Yeah, well, most laments in the Bible exhibit this proper way of doing it, if you want to call it that, or interesting way of doing it, or, hmm, faithful way of complaining? Yeah, voice your complaint. Let God know that you hurt, that you're disappointed, that you don't know why it's happening to you, or why it's happening the way it is happening, and oh, all that kind of stuff. Do that, but then recognize that you put your faith and your hope and trust in God. Listen to what's uh, the very end of what's often called Habakkuk's prayer. He says this, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. What a powerful way to finish a psalm of lament, a prayer of lament that he raises up on behalf of the people. And the fact of the matter is, we don't always understand why things happen the way they do. And I believe that the scriptures, when we look at them and dive into them, it's okay for you and me to raise up our prayers of lament, our prayers of complaint, if you want to call them that as well, to God. God wants us to be honest with him. He wants us to, to express ourselves from the heart. And part of that is saying, regardless of what's happening to me now, I'm leaving it in your hands. And isn't that exactly what Jesus said from the cross? Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. We do that each and every day. So every day when you wake up in the morning, just turn it all over to God. And we do believe God is faithful to us. Okay, God, I don't understand why I'm sitting here right now with a phone in my hand and my fingers are freezing off. Can you explain that? Oh, it has something to do with the windshield factor on my bare hand. Yeah, nothing to complain about there. It's my own fault. God's blessings be with you. Enjoy this day, this wondrous Groundhog Day up in this neck of the woods because the next two days are going to be plenty cold. Blessings be with you.